Hello guys, welcome to another session with us. And um, in today's class, we're going to be studying citizenship. But before we talk about citizenship, remember the classes you've been watching thus far have been brought to you by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation and Ivy Men and the AK. Now, to today's class, citizenship. When we hear the word citizenship, the first thing that comes to mind is the word citizen. Who is a citizen? A citizen is a bona fide member of a state. Another word for bona fide will be legal. So when a person is a legal member of a state, that person is a citizen of that state. Now, the opposite of a citizen is an alien. Alien. Who is an alien? An alien is a non-legal inhabitant in a state. That is, when a person stays in a state, but that person is not recognized as a legal member of that state, that person is what? An alien. Citizen, a legal member of a state. Alien, an illegal member of a state. Now, we also have a, a registered alien. Now, when an alien is registered in a state, that alien cannot be called an illegal occupant of that state because although he is not a citizen, but yet he is not illegal. For instance, you can, you can register as a member of a state, but you are not a citizen of that state because you have not fulfilled certain conditions that makes you a citizen. I will explain. There are certain conditions that an individual must fulfill before he can be a citizen. For instance, I am a citizen of Nigeria. I go to the USA. I can be either two things, a legal alien or an illegal alien. Now, when I am registered as an alien, registered, I am legal. And when you are a registered alien, you are registered to remain in that country or that state, as the case may be, for a particular number of years or months. And when you exceed this registered number of years or months, you are turned from being a legal alien to an illegal alien. The number of unregistered Mexicans living in the USA, for instance, they are aliens, of course, but they are what? Illegal, because they are not registered as what? Aliens. Now, an alien can be transformed into a citizen. Upon the fulfillment of some conditions, an alien cannot become what? A citizen. The process through which an alien becomes a citizen is called what? Citizenship. Now, citizenship is like several concepts. It is a concept with variegated, with variegated definitions. Now, variegated from the word varied. Now, when a, a citizenship can be, like I have said, the process of transformation from alien towards citizen. Now, citizenship is also the rights and obligations of a citizen. That's another way of defining citizenship. The rights and obligations of what? A citizen. A citizen who is a bona fide member of a state has certain rights, like rights to vote during elections or contest for political offices. That kind of right is called franchise or sovereign. Now, these rights, that are enjoyed by a citizen. And the obligations, that is, the things, obligations here, yeah, the things that a citizen should do to continue enjoying rights. These things, for instance, the payment of taxes or the payment of the supreme prize. The supreme prize is, is to lay your life 
for your country. For instance, in times of war, sometimes you may have shortage of military personnel and you are called upon to defend the territorial integrity of your state. Now, when you, when you answer or honor this call and amid defending your state, you lose your life, what you have done is to pay the what supreme price. Now, the rights and obligations of a citizen are also referred to as what? Citizenship. The process of transformation from alien to citizen is also called what? Citizenship. The associated, everything that has to do with a citizen is referred to as what? Citizenship. Are you following? Now, there are certain things that a citizen must do before so there are certain things that an alien must do before he becomes a citizen. But before we delve into all these things, let us talk about a, the background of citizenship. Now, in the past, noble men were those that were referred to as citizens. When I say noble men, I mean, I mean the aristocrats, those that are of noble background, those that were born into the royal family. For instance, the concept of citizenship can be traced back so the Greco Roman era, Greco from Greek era Roman. This was a time when the Greeks and the Romans dominated everything that has to do with scholarship in the world. Now, in this period, ordinary individuals were not called citizens. They were the proletariats, they were the, they were the ordinary men, they were the subjects. They did not have the rights that we have today as citizens. Now, these ordinary men could not vote during elections, they could not contest for political offices. Now, these ordinary men began to challenge the status quo. They were angry with the fact that they were relegated to the background. And one of these challenge of the royal class by the ordinary men was the French Revolution of 1789. Another revolution in this context was the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 in Russia. Are you following me? Now, another issue that gave rise to ordinary men to clamor for equality with, with the nobles was the Declaration of Independence by the United States in 1776. The United States gained its independence on July 4th, 1776. And in the Declaration of Independence, the, the, the document read that all men are born equal. So because all men are born equal, it is now an injustice to some people if they are not granted the same rights as other people because of circumstances surrounding their birth. Are you following me? Now back to the matter. Ways that an alien can, can be transformed into a citizen. Now, number one, we have citizenship by birth. That is, when an individual is a citizen by birth, of course, he was not formerly an alien. He was a citizen by birth. Now, we have different types of citizen. We have citizen by birth, citizen by birth. We have, under citizenship by birth, we have two types. We have Jews sanguinis and we have Jews sali. Jews sanguinis refers to citizenship by birth. That is, you claim the citizenship of either of your parents. You are a citizen by virtue of the citizenship of your mother, father, or grandparents. Now, for instance, you don't need to be born in Nigeria to be a citizen of Nigeria. If you are born by Nigerian parents, for instance, in Canada, by virtue of your parents being Nigerians, you have automatically become a Nigerian through what? Jews sanguinis. You take the citizenship of your parents. Now, if you are born in Canada and you have taken the citizenship of your parents as Nigerians, you are also a citizen of Canada by the law called Jus Sali, citizenship by soil. You take the citizenship of the soil in which you are born. Now, you are born in the soil of Canada 
By virtue of that, you have become a citizen of what? Canada. So by Jews sanguinis, you are born by Nigerian parents, you are a citizen of where? Nigeria. By Jews Sali, you are born in the soil of Canada, you are a citizen of where? Canada. You have two citizenships. When an individual has two citizenships, that individual is called a dual citizen. A dual what? Citizen. Dual from the word two. Now, we can now begin to cast our minds. What if you are born in a ship that is in the waters? Which citizenship do you take by the law of Jews Sali? Now, every country that is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean or any sea has claims to that sea 12 nautical miles from the end of the country's territory into the sea. So 12 nautical miles from the end of the country's landmass into the sea that borders that country is the, is the territorial waters or the water territory of that country. Now, if you are, of course, your mother is pregnant and she went to swim in that territorial waters of, let's say, Nigeria. Of course, you are born in that territorial waters, so you are born in Nigeria by soil. Now, what if you were born on board a ship? Now, every country has claims to the waters, 12 nautical miles into the waters, and the law that granted countries right over waters that border their territory was signed in 1982, December 10th, 1982. It is called the law of the seas. Now, when every country has claimed 12 nautical miles of the sea, there remains a part of the sea that is not for any country. That part of the sea is called the Free Continental Shelf. Free Continental Shelf. Now, any country of the world can, can decide to trade in the Free Continental Shelf, can decide to fish in the Free Continental Shelf. It is not owned by any country. Let us now assume that when the ship was in the Free Continental Shelf, your mother went into labor and gave birth to you. You would be a citizen of where? Is it the Free Continental Shelf that has no country laying claims to it? You would be nobody's citizen. Now, when you are born on board a ship, even though that ship is in the territory of a country's waters, but you do not claim the citizenship of the waters in which you were born. You claim the citizenship of the country where that ship was registered. For instance, you are in the territorial waters of, let's say, the USA. Your mother is, of course, on board a ship in the US territorial waters. But this ship was registered in Togo. You are not a citizen of US, even though you were born in the territorial waters of the USA. You are a citizen of Togo because the ship was registered in where? Togo. Are you following now, we can now also talk about another type of citizenship called naturalization. Now, before an individual can be naturalized, that individual must first be an alien. And that individual must now fulfill certain conditions you must fulfill certain conditions before you can now decide to naturalize as a citizen of the host country in which you live. For instance, I am a British and I live in Nigeria. I cannot just walk up to the Nigerian government to get me registered as a Nigerian. I must fulfill certain conditions. The number one condition you must fulfill before you can be registered in a country as a citizen of that country is the condition of naturalization. That is, is the condition of residency. You must be resident in that country for a particular period of time. And this varies from one country to another. Before you can get registered as a citizen of Nigeria, you must have stayed in Nigeria for 15 years, for an uninterrupted 15 years. Before a British that stays in Nigeria can be registered as a Nigerian citizen or can naturalize as a Nigerian citizen, that British must have stayed in Nigeria for an uninterrupted period of what? 15 years. 
Now, but if this 15 years was interrupted, that is, if this British stays in Nigeria for two years and goes to Britain and stays for one year, come back again, that 15 years is not straight. It is interrupted. Now, when this is the case, there must be an accumulating period of 15 years in a 20-year period. I believe you understand me. That is, if the person that wants to get naturalized in Nigeria does not stay in Nigeria for a straight 15 years. Now, for all the period that that person has stayed in Nigeria, if you are to gather the period together, in a 20 year span, the person should have lived in Nigeria for what? 15 years. And the last year, that is the 15th year, before the person files to the president of Nigeria for naturalization, that 15th year, that is the 12 months before the person is filing to be naturalized in Nigeria, that 12 months must be uninterrupted. That is, that foreigner must stay in Nigeria for 12 months uninterrupted before he files to become what? A citizen of what? Nigeria. Are you following? Now, another is language. Before you can naturalize in another country, you must prove that you can speak the language of that country. Another is good character. You must prove beyond every reasonable doubt that you are a man of good character. And the people in the area that you live or the people in the district in which you live must attest to the fact that you are being a man of good character during the time in which you stayed in their midst. Are you following me? Another is that you must prove that you are of importance that you can add to the development of the country. No country wants a liability in its land. So before you can naturalize as a citizen of a country, you must prove that you are able to add to the development and growth of that country. I have mentioned four things that you must do before you can decide to file for naturalization. Now we have different types of naturalization. We have direct naturalization, number one, direct. Direct naturalization means that you are an alien and you have stayed in a country and you have fulfilled all the conditions that that country demands from you before you can be naturalized. Now, when you fulfill the conditions like residency, language, good character, you can now file for naturalization under the process called what? Direct naturalization. We have number two. Derivative Naturalization. In some countries, you do not automatically become a citizen of that country because you were born in that country. Now, in some instance, you are married to a person in a country and you are not a citizen of the country where your spouse is a citizen of. For instance, a Nigerian that gets married to a British citizen. Now, the kind of naturalization that that person will naturalize is not direct. It is what? Derivative. Because you are deriving your citizenship from your spouse's citizenship. For instance, your son in the quest for greener pastures lives, let's say, Niger. Capital of Niger is Miami. Leaves Niger and goes to the United Kingdom and has fulfilled the conditions to become a citizen of the United Kingdom. Now, that person now wants to, or you, as the mother or father of your child that is now a citizen, wants to become a citizen. The process of naturalization you will use is called what? Derivative, because you will derive your citizenship from your son or daughter's citizenship. Now, talking about residence, I talked about the condition you must fulfill to the residential condition you must fulfill to become a Nigerian citizen. A Nigerian citizen. Now, in the UK, for instance, you must have stayed in the United Kingdom for five years. You must have stayed in the United Kingdom for what? Five years before you can ask for permanent residency. Now, listen up, class. When you have permanent residency, it does not automatically make you a citizen. It means that you have the right to stay in that country for as many years as you can live. But it does not make you a citizen. In Britain, 
you must have stayed there for five years before you can become a permanent resident. Now, before you can now ask for the citizenship of Britain, you must first have permanent residency for one year. I repeat, to file or ask the government of Britain for permanent residency, you must have stayed there for how many years? Five years. And before you can now ask for the citizenship of Britain, you must already have your permanent residency for what? One year. Are you following me? Now, in the United States of America, to be a citizen, you must have stayed in the country for half or five years. That is an approximate of 913 days. You must have stayed in USA for half of what? Five years. That is two and a half years. But if you have a spouse, if you have a spouse, that is your husband or your wife is already a citizen, you will now stay for half of what? Three years. That is approximate of 548 days. So if 548 days, yes, 548 days. If you have a spouse that is already a citizen, you will, before you can become a citizen of the USA, you must have stayed in the USA for 548 days. But if you do not want, you do not have a spouse and you want to register or you want to naturalize in the USA, you must have stayed for half of what? Five years. That is 913 days. Are you following me? Now, the third type of naturalization we would like to talk about is collective naturalization. Collective naturalization. It means that you are naturalizing as a citizen of a country because that country has collectively naturalized everybody in the community in which you live. Now pay attention. There were four communities that were collectively naturalized or they were inhabitants of four communities that were collectively naturalized by France in the colonial era. These four communities are Gori, pay attention, Rufisk, Saint Louis. Remember, this name is not Louis, this name is what? Louis. In French, every French word, if a French word ends with a consonant letter, that consonant letter is what? Silent. For instance, it is not Paris, but what? Paris. It is not Louis, but what? Louis. Like for instance, the word sachet, like for instance you say a sachet of pure water. That word is a French word. It is not sachet, but what? Sachet. Because in French, when you end a word with a consonant letter, that consonant letter is what? Silent. Another example is the camp we call beret. It is not an English word, it is what? A French word. And that cap is not beret, it is what? Beret. Are you following? Now, the last of these communities is Dakar. Now, the inhabitants of Gori, Saint Rufis, Saint Louis, and Dakar in the year 1848. We are collectively naturalized by France because France was their colonial power. So from 1848, every inhabitant of these four communes, these places were called communes. Every inhabitant of these four communes were collectively naturalized by who? France. Another example is Hawaii, currently one of the 50 states in the USA. The USA has 50 states and the 50 states of the United States have a representation in the flag of the United States. Now the United States has 50 stars in its flag and each star represents each state of the world United States. Just like Nigeria, the capital of the United States, Washington DC, this is just stands for District of Columbia, just like Nigeria, where FCT, Federal Capital Territory Abuja, is not a state. In the US, their capital city 
Washington District of Columbia is not what? A state. If you add that as a state to the US, we will have 51 states in the world, US. But USA has what? 50 states. Now, like I was saying, the, or as I was saying, like, the inhabitants of Hawaii were collectively naturalized by USA even before Hawaii became one of the United States of the USA. Are you following? Now, we also have what we call honorary citizenship. Honorary citizenship. Now, because of exceptional qualities of an individual, when you show that you are a man of exceptional qualities, a country can award you their citizenship. For instance, I tend to use the USA several times for examples. It is because when we're talking about democracy today, although democracy started from Athens, Greece, direct democracy, but in today's world, the USA seems to be the quintessential of a democratic state. Quintessential here means the perfect example or the most perfect example. Are you following? So now, Honorary citizenship, when you have shown that you are a man of exceptional qualities and you have, you have given so much to the development of the world and several countries or a particular country has benefited from your activities, that country cannot award you as a citizen by what? Honor. Since the Declaration of Independence in the United States in 1776, the United States has honored eight individuals as citizens. They are honored what? Eight individuals as citizens. These individuals are honorary citizens of where? The United States. Among these eight individuals is Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill is a one-time Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And in 1953, Winston Churchill won the Nobel Prize for Literature. He is a Nobel Laureate. Laureate means that you have been awarded. Now, in 1986, Desmond Tutu, who was the first black archbishop of the Anglican Church in South Africa, in Johannesburg, he was awarded a Nobel Prize for Peace in 1983. Now, our own Wole Inka in 1986 was awarded a Nobel Prize for what? Literature. Wole Inka is the first Nigerian and my memory says me well, only Nigerian that has been awarded by the Swedish agency that gives the North Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize is a will of a man called Alfred Nobel. In his will, he said that several people should be awarded with prizes in different departments. There are prizes in peace and in what in literature. Are you following? Now, Winston Churchill is one of the beneficiaries. Of the United States honor or citizenship by what honor. Another individual is Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa and Winston Churchill are the only people that were awarded citizenship by the United States in their lifetime, in their lifetime. Now, what this means is that the other six people that were awarded honorary citizenship of, of the United States, we are given this status after their death. That is, they were given this status posthumously. Anything that happens after the death, pay attention. Anything that happens to an individual after the death of that individual happens what? Posthumously. So, apart from Winston Churchill, one time Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and Mother Teresa, a Catholic nun who had an impact felt in philanthropic activities. Apart from these two, the other six individuals were given their honorary citizenship of the USA post humanity. Now, in the year 2001, in the year 2001, Canada, Canada is the second largest country in the world in terms of landmass. Canada has 10 provinces. Now, the, at the second level of government, that is at the second level in the structure of Canada, they don't have states, they have what? Provinces, that is the 
or we can say states are to Nigeria. That is, 36 states are to Nigeria, as what? 10 provinces are to where? Canada. The states of Canada are not called, or, or the federating houses of Canada are not called states, but they are called what? Provinces. In Switzerland, for instance, these are not called states. Neither are they called provinces, they are called cantons. Are you following? Now, in 2001, Canada, who, which that is a parliamentary system of government, although Canada is independent, but they still retain the Queen of England as their head of state. The head of government in Canada, who is called a prime minister, is currently referred to as, or currently known as, Justin Trudeau. Now, in 2001, Canada awarded Nelson Mandela, the first black president of South Africa, who became president of South Africa under a political party called ANC in 1994, when the first multiracial election took place in South Africa. Pay attention. Before 1994, elections in South Africa were only contested by what? The whites in South Africa under a policy called apartheid. Now, when apartheid was dismantled in South Africa and there was a multiracial election, multiracial means that for that is both the whites in South Africa and the blacks could contest elections and vote for their choice candidates for the first time in what year? 1994. And Nelson Mandela, who has served several years in prison because of his challenge for the apartheid policy, came back and contested under the African National Congress and won elections as the first black president of South Africa. Now, in 2001, Canada awarded Nelson Mandela as an honorary what, citizen of where? Canada. Now, in Ireland, for instance, those that are awarded honorary citizenship in Ireland, they do not have, they have the right to vote or be voted for. That is, in Ireland, if you are awarded as an honorary citizen, sorry, as a honorary citizen, you are, you are, you do not have limitations as to rights. Are you following me? Now, in, in Ireland, the capital of Ireland is Dublin. In Ireland, if you are awarded as a citizen by honor, you can vote and be what voted for. But this is not the case in several other countries that award what honorary what citizenship. Now, the last part we'll consider before the end of this class under the topic citizenship is the rights and obligations of a citizen. Now, you can give me five rights of a citizen and five obligations of a citizen on the comment section and you will get a reward of nothing less than a gigabyte of data. Thank you very much. We have come to the end of today's class. Thank you.